If only you can see the pain in my heart. If only you can see. If only you can see. No, no, I say. If only you can see the pain in my heart. If only you can see. If only you can see. It is so good to see you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm very much pleased that um, you still keep it locked on the channel. You realize that I get little time, but um, I have adjusted and things are now going to flow. So in the event you are here for the first time, this is where we have it for our political analysis. And this is the place. So one of the ways that you can actually support the channel is just giving our videos like so that it reaches a wider a base. Now, th there is this time around 2016-2017 um, when we were almost, you know, approaching the D-Day of the election for the second term of President Uru Kenyatta. You remember there's this time when the NCIC, okay, and the ESC, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, all right, there is this time when they were actually so aggressive in matters to do with the head speech and how politicians were being loose in their tongues and you know they, they were very very strict on realizing the economic you know the, or the national cohesion and i remember that is the time when you know they, they had a lot of you know express powers to deal with the culprits especially in the political setup those who are you know fond of making careless statements and i remember this time when um, you know the political divide the supporters of Raila Odinga, actually the lieutenants, the key vocal ones who were behind Raila Odinga. You mentioned Babu Awino, you mentioned Junet Mohammed. You know, there is also this, by that time Aisha Jumwa uh, was also in the list of Raila's team. And then in, in, in Uhuru's camp, um, we had the likes of Moses Kuria. Uh, we also had the likes of... Um, this this Nakuru Bahati MP, uh, the, this one who shot, I'm forgetting the name. We we also had him. Then there is the, there were also some key elements who are actually losing their tongues, and so you know they were they, they were segmented. In, in fact, they were marked. For Raila's case, we had Babuino and Junet Muhammad, and then for Ruto's case, we had one man who was very very much key and mostly mentioned and that is Moses Kuria. So at one time uh, there is this one day when uh, William Ruto made a serious statement that if Raila's team, the NASA team, had the loose mouth elements like Babo Wayne and Junet Mohammed, then in the Jubilee side he said that um, he can also release Moses Kuria. So meaning you know, an eye for an eye, you know, a tooth for a tooth, you know, both sides. So, Ruto was very specific on Moses Kuria. Now, why am I bringing that? I was bringing that to base on what has really come out uh, to the extent that William Ruto has really fully supported, um, you know, what Moses Kuria did. In fact, very many people were expecting that, you know, William Ruto will distance himself like Mudavadi actually distance himself and if you look at the way Mudavadi played that aspect of Moses Kuria you know it kind of showed a mature leadership at the end of it but you know when William Ruto was being interrogated today when he was at Naivasha officiating the you know the rally 
uh, you know, he, he was saying that there is no way he can, um, you know, rebuke what Moses Korea said. There is no way he can think of even reprimanding him. And there is also a big way for media to learn a lesson. So for him, this was kind of something which Moses Korea played exactly well uh, for him. And, and William Ruri is now celebrating because it is like he, Moses Kuri has been used to, you know, play what is always said, you know, vengeance is left for who? The man who can play it so well. Now, in, 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 in this setting, you know, it's like William Ruto is telling people that vengeance is for Moses Kuri because he was saying that, um, you know, the media has always been attacking him. And nobody has been going to tell the media that, you know, you need not to attack the president in this manner. Like he went ahead and said that the media has been writing, you know, very, very dirty things about him. And nobody has been speaking for him and going to rebuke the media. So you remember, even before Ruto came into power, you know, this war between him and the media, uh, between his team and the media, you know, it has been an intense war. So it's kind of... Um, something you know anger that has been carried forward into the current dispensation and this is the time when you know if something uh, like a bomb is going to be unleashed then it is going to be so severe between these two factions such that there is nobody who can prevent it because one is very powerful and the other one cannot be stopped you know you cannot stop the media you cannot eliminate media whether you're the president you cannot eliminate and at the same time you know the president can actually take an advantage of undermining the rights that you operate under and it actually giving you something that you you never thought would make you play uh, your activities well so william Ruto has taken advantage of everything that moses Curia actually did and going forward that has actually indicated something that uh, perhaps um any serious thing that will come in this government that people will need to be questioned will not be questioned in the first place and i was looking at the reactions like the last video when, when i was telling you about it you know you you you'll see the reaction from a cross-sectional manner very many people are not happy with it in fact i was looking at miguna miguna's reaction and miguna miguna you know actually kind of was against it uh, because he has never drunk from the same cup with Moses Kuria and even Ruto himself but he has actually found himself in a situation where you know he just supports um, what is established by the president and as a matter of fact you know there is something which was going around and you know um, Moses Kuria was quoted to having had uh, actually given a stern warning to Meguna Meguna that if Meguna Meguna continues to uh, talk ill about whatever he said or kind of reprimand him then definitely Miguna Miguna should prepare for his a uh, second deportation a and so what that what does that tell you in fact Moses Kuria was saying that it is just a matter of one phone call so one phone call is just enough for him to make everything come into the way he wants so if it is a matter of organizing for the deportation then definitely it is just a phone call and when Moses Kuria was meeting the Senate you know, the, the, the same, same language, the same, same audacity that I was talking about in the first video is the same, same one that he really expressed. So it's kind of, uh, you know, everything that he said, everything that he did, and, and, and even going forward, you know, the kind of audacity that he will be operating with is an audacity that is officiated by the man on the top. You know, you can maybe say that, you know, he has the full blessings of the man at the top. This is the time that um, if William Ruto is going to see a backlash from the public, then he has now put Moses Kuria to be a ready bullet, you know, to be fired. So this ready bullet is going to do its job perfectly well. Because Moses Kuria can never go wrong with his lips. Moses Kuria can never go wrong with his tongue. When he is fired up, you know, the kind of havoc that he creates is so immense. And it goes, you know, crazily across the nation. And so William Ruto has identified. And this is one of the areas that, you know, perhaps going forward, if we are going to see more of the corrupt dealings, then 
even the colleagues of Moses Kuria, the other CSs, would actually borrow what Moses Kuria did as an example, and they would actually go with what the master is uh, seeing as, you know, pleasant for him. You know, if you look at um, Rigadi Gashagwa, for a good time, William Bruto has always allowed Rigadi Gashagwa to tackle issues. And as a matter of fact, most of the times you will see that uh, Rigadi Gashagwa would take advantage of anything that needs to be acted upon in support of the president. Because he knows very well that when he goes into, into you know, trend mode like that, and when something is very sensitive and he be the man who is championing the support for William Bruto, then he takes the credit. So for this case, William Bruto has taken the game a notch higher to bring in a man that he knows he is so much reckless with his words and, you know, who can actually jump in and take the bullet for the president with his words. And whatever is being said is always directly from the man on the top. So he has taken the game a notch higher. And by taking a, the game a notch higher, you know, he is going to be the man in the middle. You know, Rigadi Gashagwa said that he only agrees with Moses Kuria on one stand, but the other one he doesn't. But William Bruto, who is the president, said what? He agreed with him in totality. Oh, we need a fair balance. I th and I think if they are feeling pain about what others say about them, it should tell them mm -hmm. there are people who feel pain when they write falsehood about others. And I hope this will uh, enable us to uh, calibrate what we say either way, against other people, for other people. I think it will, it will really bring us together. And there is no way he can reprimand him. So what are we here to see? An authoritarian government. We are in a sad state. And as always, it is a sad story. I'll see you in the next analysis. May you have a great time.